Hello YouTubers, welcome to my channel. My name is Shauna and today I will be actually showing you a melt and pour recipe that I got from my favorite magazine that I love to read which is called Willow and Sage. Um, today's recipe will be a lavender honey and lemon melt and pour soap and we will be using of course lavender buds we will be adding vitamin E for extra moisturizing. I actually got this fragrance called Relaxing from Brambleberry. Love it. We're going to be adding some essential oils, which is lavender and lemon. I will also be zesting a full lemon. I'll be using this lemon to actually incorporate into my melt and pour soap. And also to sprinkle just a little bit on the top to give it that extra pop. Today I'm actually using one pound of shea butter melt and pour soap and one pound of goat's milk melt and pour soap along with honey. Okay, so right now I'm actually zesting this lemon. Um, this recipe calls for lemon zest, fresh lemon zest. So what you're going to do is you're going to make sure that when you zest your lemon, you kind of keep it on a paper towel and you're going to have to take another paper towel and press down just to get out all of the excess liquid. And if you don't know about melt and pour soaps, they tend to cool off very fast. Extremely fast, to be honest. And you have to kind of work fast, otherwise it'll clump. But the good thing about melt and pour soap is that you can actually Put it in the microwave and kind of reheat it for like 10 seconds and then kind of stir it up and you'll be good to go so right now i'm actually zesting one whole complete lemon i am going to actually put it aside on a paper towel because i have to actually press it down to make sure that all the moisture is out just so the rinds will not actually um mold in my soap so you have to make sure that the uh, lemon zest is actually completely dry or almost dry will prevent your lemon zest from molding and of course you want to use this lemon for tea if you want I like tea so okay so now that I have my lemon zest fully grated which you can see here I'm going to actually take another paper towel and I'm just going to press it down gently just to make sure that I've gotten out all of the excess water. All right. And I'm going to leave this like this and I'm going to put it aside here and allow that to kind of dry out. Okay, now with the melt and pour, you have to basically start with your base. I have here one pound of shea butter and one pound of goat's milk melt and pour soap that I got from the um, Gourmet Rose. And you can actually purchase this on eBay, okay? Now the recipe did call for just uh, goat's milk, but I wanted to actually put my spin on it, so I'm actually doing half and half. Now you want to make sure that when you're cutting your melt and pour soap base, you are cutting them in small, somewhat even chunks. That way you can melt them easily. And you'll be able to be finished with this recipe fairly quickly. Alright, so you take a nice sharp kitchen utensil. And what I like to do is I like to actually just evenly space it out. And, and with melt and pour soap, it's very easy to cut, so you don't have to really, you know, worry about struggling to cut it, which I love because I'm not really that strong arm-wise. Okay, and while I'm cutting it, um, I like to do melt and pour soaps uh, if I am planning on giving this to... Uh, co-worker or family member um, with cold press soaps you kind of have to let those kind of cure for about four to six weeks and while I love to do that um, this is a 
really quick and simple recipe that I'm going to actually um, give as a gift to my coworkers. It's a really natural type of soap where it's very refreshing. It'll wake you up in the morning. Um, just bathing with it, I love it. Um, with this particular soap, um, it will uh, thicken on you quite fast. All right. You want to definitely, with all melt and pour soaps, you want to make sure that you put it in a microwave safe glass bowl. Why? Well, you don't want your soap to blow up on you. That would be horrible. And then I might cry. No, I'm just kidding. I wouldn't cry. But I'd be disappointed. Okay, so I already have half of my shea butter soap in. And you can see that they're pretty much even chunks. It shouldn't take that long for it to melt. Um, and also, when you are dealing with melt and pour soap, certain fragrances will cause your soap to kind of seize, especially when you're dealing with citrus flavors, like um, citrus essential oils or a citrus fragrance. You got to kind of watch it um, when you are melting your soap. These soaps have a tendency to scorch and it smells really bad, extremely bad, if you burn your soap. Trust me, I know, I've done it. And once you burn your soap, there is no get back. It is a wrap, that's it, honey, that is it. You cannot do anything about it, but start over. Okay, so I've basically chopped up all of my melt and pour soap. And what I'm planning on doing with this is I'm actually going to take it to the microwave and I'm going to melt it in the microwave at 30 second increments. Doing so will allow me to fully melt my soap without the risk of it burning. And when it do melt, it's like a race. <laughs> You're racing the clock to get all of your oils in and your honey and your lavender buds before the soap fully cools down. And when it gets chunky, it's not good. And I don't like it. You can scent them with anything. This right here, oh my God. Mm, it's, it kind of smells like, um, I want to say hints of lavender, but then there's like hints of vanilla and maybe like a little bit of orange. Um, and believe it or not, actually, got these essential oils um i believe overseas and believe it or not you can actually get your money's worth this love hobby lobby um these lavender buds will go far with several soaps that you want to do either melt and pour or cold process soap all right it's almost there like we're getting there it's actually going a lot faster than what I thought. I'm going to go ahead and microwave it for 30 more seconds and then I'll stir it. Another 30 seconds in. Um, the soap is melting but we do still have chunks in there so you got to kind of have patience with melt and pour soap especially when it's this type of volume. Um, it just it takes time to fully melt it. You don't want to have chunks in your soap. It 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 just it doesn't work. Trust me, I know. Okay. This soap has absolutely no fragrance, which I love. I'm able to actually put my own fragrance in and make it your own. For beginner soapers. I strongly suggest melt and pour soap because basically it will allow you a little bit of time to kind of play with your scents and your essential oils and you know it's room for error. You don't, you know, when you're dealing with cold pressed soaps, those oils are expensive and if you're new to soaping, you know, you don't want to ruin a soap and have spent all that money. With melt and pour soaps, it gives you a chance to kind of practice 
before you fully decide to take a dive into soaking. Our soap has completely melted. And again, you want to work fast with this recipe. Again, you want to work fast. So you want to do 15 drops of lemon essential oils. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, 10, 12, 13, 14, 15. All right, that's 15. Stir that up. Ooh, it smells good. It smells just like fresh lemons. Okay, now I'm gonna actually uh, be doing 15 drops of the lav Ooh, lavender oil. Bloopers. All right, 15 drops of lavender essential oil. Okay, and then the bramble berry, I'm actually just going to be doing three droplets of the fragrance oil. Again, I want this soap to be nice and fresh and wake you up. Um, this is vitamin E oil. Again, I want the soap to actually have better moisturizing than what an actual melt and pour soap base has. Okay? So, now that I have that, I'm going to stir it. It's still quite hot, so it gives me some time. With these lavender buds, I'm going to do, I believe, three tablespoons. So, I'm going to measure it. Measuring is key when you're doing with, dealing with soap. And lavender buds, in case you were wondering, they are a natural exfoliant. So, if you want to get that dead skin off, go with the lavender buds. Next, I'm going to actually do two tablespoons of honey. I've actually um, warmed my honey up in the microwave first um, so that it would be easy to pour. So you're going to do two tablespoons of honey. I mean, if you think about it, it's really like this recipe is very organic. And I love it. I mean, you cannot go wrong with essential oils. Make sure to look at the counters now, man. Seriously. All right. So what I'm doing is I am incorporating everything and just checking to see if I left anything out, um, which of course I did. So here, if you remember, I said that I would be incorporating the lemon zest inside. So what I'm doing is I'm putting the most of the lemon zest in. I want to kind of leave some out for the top of the soap. Oh my God, this smells so good, you guys. Okay, so I believe we are ready to pour. I'm going to put this in the sink. You want to kind of clean up your area as you go. And get that out of the way. These soap molds I got actually from Amazon. I believe it was maybe about seven or eight bucks um which i love because you can actually make bars of soap other than the loaves and like i said i'm giving these as a gift to my co-workers all right so now we're going to actually prepare to pour okay with this mixture see this i actually like both combinations um, because the soap is actually doing really well. Usually by this stage, I'll probably have some curling, to be honest, and that absolutely sucks. Um, I believe that I have just enough, um, to complete my soap cavities. I'm going to put a little bit more here, just so all of them can be, uh, even. And it looks so pretty, you guys. Um. If you can see it, you can see like the bits of lemon zest and um, the lavender buds. It's They complement each other very well. Um, I also want to note that when you have leftover soap, 
you can always put that in a Ziploc bag and you can freeze it. You can actually use it as a rebatch soap for other projects. You can actually remelt it, put it in some very cute mold, and you can have like soap embeds that are like lavender and um, lemon. Awesome. Okay, so what I'm doing is I'm just sprinkling just a little bit more lemon on the soap. I love the color contrast that it gives. I, I just, I love really pretty looking soap. So outside of it being a really natural and healthy soap, it has to be a pretty soap. Cause I'm such a glam girl and glam girls love, love pretty stuff. Okay, so I have included my fresh lemon zest, my honey, my relaxing brambleberry oil, my lavender essential oil, and lemon oil. And when I tell you guys, this smells divine. Now, in case you're wondering why am I squirting water? No, it's not water. <laughs> it is rubbing alcohol. With melt and pour soaps, and also with cold press process soaps, you tend to get those nasty little air bubbles in your soap. And when you have air bubbles in your soap, guess what? Your soap is gonna have like this huge hole in it and it's just gonna look nasty. Um, what I'm doing now, I'm just kinda, ooh, didn't mean to do that. I'm so used to working with another mold. Okay, now the good thing about these is when you pour it, it kind of does its own thing. None of your soaps will ever be the same, which is good because your consumers, your customers are going to get a different soap every single time. Like if you pan, if you actually look close at these soaps, you'll see none of them are the same. With these melt and pour soaps, you're going to allow them to actually cool for at least three to four hours before trying to unmold. You can also put it into the freezer to try and help it to kind of solidify faster. But I would suggest that you just kind of let it chill out and do its thing. After I'm done unmolding this soap, I'm gonna go ahead and shrink wrap the soap and prepare it for packaging. But of course, that will be another YouTube okay, video. So I know I mentioned earlier about you actually saving your leftover melt and pour soap and using it as a rebatch soap or actually using it as in bed mold. Um, I actually did a soap about a few weeks ago and I made these really cute, I don't know if you can really see it, but um, I made these really cute butterfly peach colored um, soap embeds. And I put them, actually, believe it or not, in my Strawberry Hill soap. Um, this right here is actually me um, leftover from my Strawberry Hill uh, soap. Smells really good still. And these soaps will keep in your freezer for a very long time. till you're ready to use them. I mean, you pay all this money for these soaps and... I mean, I don't know about you, but I'm not wasting nothing. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and put these back in the freezer. Again, once this actually cools down completely, I'm gonna go ahead and put it in a Ziploc bag, take it to this here freezer, where it will stay until I'm ready to go ahead and make another so, so I want to thank you guys for watching my channel. Please click the link below and subscribe. Like my video. I am an inspiring soaper who loves glam and bling and pretty things. And I look forward to making very beautiful, healthy, and glamorous soaps for you guys. Happy soaping.